Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with a rational expression. Now, this problem was suggested by a good friend of mine. I actually have a lot of friends that give me math problems when they see me. So it's one of them. So we have x squared minus 2 over x equals 5, and we're supposed to evaluate x minus 1 over x. There's one stipulation that x does not equal negative 2, but we're going to take a look at some cases where x equals negative 2 and what happens. If you plug in x equals negative 2 here, obviously, that is going to satisfy the equation, right? So I'll be presenting three methods, and let's start with the first one. What I just said is uh, going to give you a clue for the third method. So first step is making a common denominator and cross-multiplying. That gives us x cubed minus 2 equals 5x. And from here, I can isolate x and write it as 5x plus 2. OK. So how can I use this information to find out what x minus 1 over x is? Let's go ahead and set x minus 1 over x equal to k. k is a constant, so my goal is to find the numerical value for x minus 1 over x. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here. And then cross multiply. And write x squared as a linear term. Just like what we did with x cubed. Now, this is what x squared equals. And I'd like to go to x cubed from here. So think about these as polynomials. So we can multiply both sides by x. That's going to give us the following. Notice that x squared can always be replaced with kx plus 1. Let's do it. And this gives us a formula for x cubed. So this is k squared x plus 1x. So I can kind of combine those plus a constant k. But we know that x cubed is actually 5x plus 2, right? So let's go ahead and write that down here. 5x plus 2. That indicates that this is equal to 5 and this is equal to 2. So we kind of like have a system from the first one. We get k squared equals plus minus, I mean plus minus k equals plus minus 2. But the second one gives us k equals 2, so we have to go with that. And since we were looking for k, the answer would be 2 in this case. Make sense? So the first method basically sets the x minus 1 over x equal to a constant and then express x cubed uh, in terms of x. Okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So let me rewrite the problem. This is given and we're supposed to evaluate x minus 1 over x and we want that x not to equal negative 2. Okay, so here's what we can do. And this is important now. This condition uh, needs to be satisfied. I'm going to go ahead and write the 5 as 4 plus 1. And then subtract 4, add 2 over x. Make a common denominator. And factor the left-hand side. Now, this condition is important because if x equals negative 2, obviously we're going to have 0 equals 0. And negative 2 obviously satisfies this equation. If x does not equal negative 2, then we can go ahead and cancel it out, leaving us with the following. And our goal was to solve for x minus 1 over x. So if you switch these terms around, you'll get the answer. So x minus 1 over x from here equals 2. And of course, if x does not equal negative 2. Obviously, if x equals negative 2, this is not going to be satisfied because if you plug it in, it's not going to work. Make sense? Okay, so that is the second method. It's kind of like more elegant, sort of, but this problem was, as people call it, contrived because it's kind of like a math competition type of problem. 
where you need to manipulate things to get what you want. Okay? So, let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. And I want to tell you something about the third method because the third method basically depends on solving the cubic. So remember our given expression was like this and then we multiply everything by x which gives us a cubic equation. And as you know cubic equations can be solved. There's a cubic formula, a little complicated, but there's a process where we use the identity a plus b cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed and then we set this equal to x and this is x and then we compare the coefficients so on and so forth. You can go through that and guess what you're going to find after you do all of that. x value that you find from a quadratic is going to be cube root of 1 plus 7 over 3 times the square root of 2 over 3i plus the cube root of 1 minus 7 over 3 times the cube root, square root of 2 over 3i two complex numbers, the cube root of two complex numbers being added, and that should be a real number. So it's going to be interesting to find out what that number is going to look like, but here's what I'd like to say about this cubic equation. Because you don't have to use the cubic formula all the time, and actually that should not be your um, first uh, attempt. Uh, that should kind of be saved as a last resort, because there's easier ways to do it, if possible. And that is, one of them is called rational root theorem. So the rational root theorem basically says if there's a rational root, then it needs to divide the constant term if the coefficient, the leading coefficient is 1. We have um, a monic polynomial here, so that's good. We're only going to look at factors of negative. There's only so many of them, right? Plus minus 1 and plus minus 2. So we're going to test all of these. And 1 and negative 1, obviously, are not solutions. But guess what? Negative 2 is a solution. Because if you plug it in, negative 2 cubed minus 5 times negative 2 minus 2 is equal to negative 8 plus 10 minus 2, and that's equal to 0. So negative 2 is a solution. Therefore, our expression can be factored. Factor theorem says x plus 2 is a factor. And from here, the other factor is going to be x squared minus 2x minus 1. And then this is what we get. We, we do not want, obviously, this is equal to 0. And you don't want x to be negative 2. So this can't be 0. So this has to be 0. x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And then from here, we're going to isolate the 2x and divide everything by x. And that's going to give us the answer. x minus 1 over x equals 2 if x does not equal negative 2. What happens if x equals negative 2? Then you can just plug it in and find the answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you, enjoy, you, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.